Well, old friends, this here is David Vost. Today is November 25th, 2015, and it's great to see everybody today. Well, this is the third attempt for me to get this video finished. I uh, learned a couple of lessons in the process. Um, but, um, you know, we're going to get this out, and it's going to be better this time because we've got a lot of things I want to tell you. Now, I've got to break this up into 15-minute um, clips. So, if you really want to learn, you got to wait for each video to come out. It's going to continue. There's going to be a lot of stuff. You know, now, I'm not going to be able to get everything into this first 15 minutes, friends. So, I ask you to please give me the benefit of the doubt. And let me try to explain this to you because, after all, your church probably has not done a very good job explaining revelation, prophecy, the thing of it is, it's inspired me to do this video and do it in depth. I'm going to do enough of these videos, I don't care how many it takes, and we're going to get this explained. This is going to be the complete revelation of what the Bible's trying to say. Okay, we've already gone into, you know, some things that, to me, were just totally revolutionary. But somebody was, quite a few people have been asking me, Dave, watch this video. This person explains the revelation and when the Antichrist is coming and who the beast is and you know and when the rapture occurs and we're gonna get all this information I want you to check it out and let me know well I've, I've put a, a lot of stuff in prior videos and we've talked about so many different things you know but most of you have been watching my videos know by now there is a big big problem that we're having with understanding the Bible it's the same thing with prophecy I want you to give me the benefit of the doubt because when I was trying at the beginning when I started telling people we're not under law a lot of you said whoa no way you know of course we're not supposed to murder and what are you talking about you think we can around steal and cheat and lie now and then you began to understand what I was talking about you began to understand the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant and the eye for an eye and give and you shall receive and the spirit of love and and carnal commandments and we went through all of that then we got into some new stuff it really shocked some of you and this was so shocking that a lot of you didn't get through that and perhaps you still have some problems with it and that was the fact that the Old Testament had nothing to do with the New Testament in the sense that it was not from the same God and we were not required to keep any of the laws ever because they were simply slanderous accusations by the accuser that that Jehovah wasn't really God but was one of the angels who was apportioned over the earth there were 70 of these beings that came down and were ruling over the world and they apportioned up the earth and we we read that in Deuteronomy and we talked about how Jehovah was that angel in Acts chapter 7 who um, rebelled and wanted to exalt his throne above the stars of, of, of El Elyon we've gone through all of this and how Jesus said that your father talking to the Jewish people and the, the God that they worship which is Jehovah I am the ego you know that egotistical expression I am and I am a jealous God see the Bible's not trying to hide anything from you they let you know right away this God's angry we call him El you know Yahweh Sabaoth which is the God of war and he's the God who says I want sacrifice and it's you know, sweet smelling savor in my nostrils and kill all the animals and go in there and rape the women and kill the people and genocide and we've talked all about this now I don't want this video to be about that but as a preliminary for a lot of other people who haven't seen a lot of my videos you'll have to go back to get that information we've been covering this and I think for a lot of you we've gotten to a place where we accept that and we understand there was a whole lot about the Bible we just didn't know same thing about prophecy and I've covered some of this I've been doing little bits of this little you know but I want to go in depth now because people are saying you got to read this and you got to see this video and what do you think Dave and I think it's just time that we we just got serious about this because people need to know what is the Bible talking about you see you've got to know how to understand the Bible you can't just start reading it and say well I think this revelation is talking about um, this or that or you know the dragon is Obama because he kind of looks like a dragon yeah you can't just make up stuff you got people saying well 
I think that there's going to be a rapture in 1954, and it actually happened, but nobody knew it. And here we still are, and we're all evil people, and then they were all already taken. Why wouldn't you believe that? You know, the witnesses, Jehovah's Witnesses, they think that Christ came in 1914. They've got 20 million people all around the world that believe this. And that they were put in power by Jesus in 1914. And they're the faithful slave giving out the food at the proper time. And only a select few is going to go to heaven. And they've got this whole thing. Amazing because the scripture tells us right off the bat. Not to believe people who say, come on, Jesus is already here. He's in the inner chambers. Come out to see him. We got a little secret viewing of the Lord, right? So, I don't know why people run off to these views. You know, even Seventh-day Adventists, and I respect them very much. They're vegetarians, as I am. They have a lot of truth. But they are stuck on some things that are just wrong. They still think that, you know, the end of the world was going to come in 1844, and we're in the last days, and... And uh, so, there's just these views that get started. Now, some of you are in one view or another, pre-tribulation or post-tribulation, or you don't believe in the you know, rapture, or you do believe in it, and it's going to be, you know, just, just, you know, the Antichrist is going to be from the Middle East, he's going to be from the Vatican. You've got all these ideas. But the one thing that most of you believe, because it's popular right now, is that the Antichrist is coming, the world's coming to an end, we're going to have a thousand year reign of Christ, and we're going to get wings grow on our back, and we're going to fly on up to heaven, and we're going to play on harps, and there's going to be all these angels and stuff. And what I've been trying to explain to you is right off the bat, this doesn't sound right, does it? Have you really thought about it? But see, in your mind, you think, wait, well, I don't know, it doesn't sound right, you know, that people are going to claw their way up out of their grave and come out, right, and the bones are going to get flesh on them and we're just going to have a resurrection. No, it doesn't really sound feasible. This is why people don't believe in the Bible. Because they've already said, that doesn't sound right, so they just quit. But you as a Christian, you don't want to quit. You know there's something to that Bible. You feel that there is something, that the Bible is the word of our Lord. And you know it in your heart. Here's the problem. You don't understand the Bible. You don't know how it works. You've been duped into, number one, thinking this God was your God when it wasn't. You missed all of what Jesus was saying because he wasn't talking about the law and how he had to appease the, all these commandments and do everything his father told him because his father wanted him to die on a cross. and that was gonna, That's not what the Bible says. You can't go into that one in this video, but we've done that in many other videos. He didn't pay the price with his blood to his own father. He paid that price to hell and to the satanic forces that had us bound because we had signed under the dotted line. We were guilty. We signed a valid contract and it had to be fulfilled. Here's where I'm going to jump in now to prophecy because you see this is the meaning of the Old Testament. The meaning of the Old Testament is how we got into this position. How did we get here in this situation where we don't know who we are, we don't know where we are, we don't know why we're here? There's a mystery. We know that, right? That's the whole point. The whole Old Testament is mysteries. See, because the people were given mysteries. Enoch walked with God and he was given these mysteries and he wrote them down, symbols and signs. He got astrology. That's symbology. Look up in the sky. Have you ever seen astrology? It's, there's, there's a lion, Leo, right? The Virgo, the dragon. That's all in the Bible. That was given to Enoch. But it was done in mysteries. They taught it in mystery schools for a long time. So what we're trying to do is understand the Bible. Why it was written. That, you're not going to understand prophecy until you understand, first of all, what the darn thing is. What is this book? Okay. Revelation cannot be done through words. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. So the Bible's not going to reveal everything to you. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth to you. You have to have communication. You have to have spirit. You have to have understanding of spiritual things. That's why Jesus was walking with his disciples and they didn't even recognize him. But see, that's a symbolic little parable there. They didn't recognize Jesus just like you and I don't recognize the inner Christ within us. The powerful inner man that can just overcome all things and command the winds and the waves. And that boat just comes to a, a rest. And we're at peace. We've been, we've been saved. 
You know, we're children of our Father in heaven. But you don't know that because Christ is sleeping in the boat. So the disciples were walking along and they saw this man. They didn't know who he was. Could have been anybody. And he starts talking to them about the Bible. And they're like, oh, yeah, our Lord just died. And they didn't know this was the resurrected Lord. They didn't recognize him. Then he, he set them down and he gave them something to eat. And as they broke the bread and as they opened it and partook of it, their eyes became opened and they recognized him. Do you see? Most of you would just say, that's just a story about they, they didn't know who Jesus was and they saw him and boop, there he was. No, that's deeper than that. It's trying to get you to understand that you're going to have to open your eyes to something new. And most of you as Christians have never opened your eyes to that new thing. You've never really been born again. You've been talking about being born again, but you never knew what it meant. You never knew what the Holy Spirit was. Most of you think that if you do this and holler and scream and say things over and over again, you're going to get the Holy Spirit. And that's not the way it works. Friends, it's not in the Bible that way. That's hokey pokey. And that's not the truth. And what you've got to do is find the truth. Let's stop limping around on one opinion or another. Let's stop going after some crackpot telling us a bunch of lies. You know, if you're in the desert land and you're thirsty and you don't have nothing to drink, some guy comes along and says, man, I found some water. You know, you don't go, ah, you're stupid. You're probably a crackpot and just walk away. You know, you need water. So you say, well, if you got water, where is it? And you go and you look because you need that water. First of all, recognize that you don't have the answer. If you can't, you're not going to ever find the truth if you think you got the truth. So if you're a Mormon or an Adventist or a Jehovah's Witness or a Lutheran and you're stuck in that, you already believe what you believe, you know what you know, and you don't want to hear it. But if you're searching and you know you don't have the truth, then listen for a moment because we're going to cover this. We're going to explain. So in the beginning, there was this original creation by our Father in Heaven. He made everything perfect. You don't need any more when you've got things perfect. We didn't need to do anything. We were happy. He gave us food to eat. We talked about how he gave, you know, the fruit from the trees. And we're supposed to eat that. We're supposed to frolic and play and be happy. There was no working. There was no Sabbath. There was nothing. There was no laws. We were all in perfect harmony with our Father in heaven. And there was no marriage. Adam and Eve were just one. They were together. They were in unity. Eve wasn't subject to her husband because that hadn't happened until after sin. And that was a whole other day. A different day when a different God made man in, in a different way. Instead of created them, he yasar, or he formed them, brought them into the physical form and began to create physical laws and commandments. He made a serpent that was deceptive and a tree that had knowledge of good and evil. And it deceived Eve and it deceived human beings and we fell and their eyes became opened to the physical realm. And the serpent deceived them. So we went into this realm, and then we've got the whole Old Testament, which is all these mysteries, because we've got to try and get back. The man and the woman's got to get back. That's the bride of Christ having the big wedding at the final day in the book of Revelation, and the heavens and the earth come together, and, and the unity happens again, and we're restored. We're having the atonement, and it's all fixed. But there was a breach. And, and this unity, has we've been lost. Jesus said, I and the Father are one, ye are one with me. And all of us together are one whole. And we're in harmony. And we love each other. And it's wonderful. And the Father is the Father of light. And there's no darkness in union with Him. Your God's the devil. And I want to teach you something. Alright friends, so let's go on to the next 15-minute uh, video here. I'm going to close it here. And then I'll start right back up here where I left off.